Hey guys, I'm Zachary Gray, and this, this is a baby cotton mouth. Our goal today is to find a water moccasin. These snakes are really common throughout the wetlands of Louisiana and can have all sorts of different colorations, from gorgeous brown bands to almost a solid black color. Walking the edge of the water, we'll find all sorts of different things, including what the water moccasins are hunting for. I just caught a tree. There you go. There you go. Oh, dude. Oh, look at that. It's a shrew. Now, I don't want to hold this guy off for too long because they literally can starve themselves to death if they go too long without food. They have to eat literally every single hour. Little mouse looking thing, got a pointy nose. They mostly eat little insects and grasses and kind of stuff like that. And they live underground for most of the time. And he was out foraging in the leaves, so uh, pretty cool to see. We got to put him back quick though. We want him to keep hunting. All right, I'm going to let this little guy go. Here you go, dude. Here you go. I can you leave. Here, Shrews are really fragile, so we didn't want to disturb him for too long. The short-tailed shrew actually has a toxin in its saliva for killing its prey, and it can lead to an extremely painful bite for humans. This is a good sign, because water moccasins will normally eat little rodents like shrews, as well as other reptiles that are out right now. Oh, look at this little guy. This is a male green anole lizard. This is one of the most common species of lizard in this area. And uh, since it's still winter time, he's got that brown coloration. And uh, as they warm up and start sitting in the trees, they'll have a bright green color. But those are the only two colors that they can kind of vary towards. They're getting pushed out of the area by brown anoles, which brown anoles are a very similar lizard, very similar size. They've got a different kind of speckling. They stay brown. And they're from actually the, um, the Caribbean islands and all the places down in South Florida. And they've just kind of slowly made their way up into the United States more. So, very cool little lizard to see. And now we're going to go ahead and let this little guy go. All right, here you go, little buddy. It's clear that it's just warm enough for the reptiles to be out right now, including some other snake species. And it didn't take us long to find the snake that we were looking for. There you go, a little moxa. Oh, that's a little tiny baby. It's coiled up right there. Give me a stick. The snake hook might not be the best thing to... I'm gonna get on the bark so that he can be a little bit comfortable. The stick isn't the most comfortable thing for the snake. There we go. Have a look at that. So that is the baby water moccasin. It's all right, little buddy. Now this snake, as a baby, doesn't have a very long strike range, and that's why I can hold it like this and be safe. Now never, ever go and try this at home. Even the baby could easily send me to the hospital. Now this snake has a very potent venom, similar to that of some rattlesnake species. Uh, it's moving. Now baby water moccasins normally wouldn't be able to kill a person. However, it is very much so proven that baby snakes with a venom potency similar to this can actually kill people. In fact, uh, earlier this year somebody actually died from a baby copperhead because they had a really bad reaction to the venom. And a cotton mouse venom is actually worse. Now there's actually a huge myth that baby venomous snakes are more dangerous than the adults because they don't have a control over their venom and that's actually not true whatsoever. These snakes have very good control of their venom from the moment that they're born and it's very proven in fact that the babies are not nearly as dangerous as the adults. Now cotton mouths have a very potent venom even similar to some rattlesnake species and while it's not one of the most dangerous snakes that we have here in North America, they're so widespread and so common in this area, in this southern part of the United States, that uh, a lot of people can end up getting bit. Now I find this snake normally very easy to deal with. As you can see, even the baby is very slow moving, heavy bodied, but they can actually move very quick and they're actually amazing swimmers. This snake can swim extremely fast. Now the babies of this snake are very, very pretty. They got tan and all sorts of different patterns. And depending on where they live, they can actually sometimes keep these patterns. In this area, they end up what I call a swamp variant. And in other upland areas, they end up what we call a woods variant. It's the same snake, and they would both have the exact same genetics. 
The only difference is one would spend a lot more time in muddy water and another one would spend a lot more time in upland areas. Very big head, just like most pit vipers, they have a big blocky head and huge, huge venom glands. However, their venom is made for their prey. Fish, frogs, sometimes rodents. That's why these snakes have venom. It's to make eating and catching their prey a lot easier. It's not made as a defense mechanism, although they will use it that way. It's mostly made for them to be able to eat much, much easier and not have to chase down or struggle to get their food. It's a very interesting snake. In fact, this is one of the only subaquatic pit vipers in the world, which is pretty crazy. It's the only viper that really, really lives in the water. And while copperheads actually do normally live along water, and many other pit vipers do, these guys live in the water and they'll actually swim across these lakes, across these little river systems, and they always live around them. They can live in a heck of a lot of different environments. They can live in river areas, lakes, ponds. They can live almost anywhere. Now this snake oftentimes, especially this time of year, can end up being a real nuisance to people. Uh, they can actually come up around people's porches to sun or even try to get indoors to uh, get some heat because this is a cold-blooded animal. They don't produce their own heat, so they have to get it from an outside source. And in the wintertime, they'll come up to people's houses, and a lot of people see this as them trying to break into their house, which, in a sense, they are. They're trying to get warm. And uh, a lot of people end up killing them during that time. In fact, a few people end up being bit during that time period. Uh, there are very few deaths from this species of snake, especially in recent years. However, people have died from this snake. Make no mistake of it. And if you ever see one of these snakes, definitely leave it alone. Don't try and mess with it a bunch. Uh, just leave it from afar. In fact, the number one time that people actually get bit by this snake is when they're trying to kill it, which is pretty crazy. This is probably one of the most common venomous snakes in this area, and uh, they pretty much have free roam of the swamps. They're a very stable species. They're not endangered by any means because they live in such vast areas. It's a very cool snake to see out here, and I'm glad we're getting to show you guys this animal. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you did enjoy, definitely leave a like. And I will see you guys next time. All right, we're going to go ahead and let this little guy go. All right, here you go, little buddy. I'm going to put you right back where you were. There you go. Good boy.